Well, that did not go as planned. It's just been a mess. So crazy, I'm using my Christmas coffee cup and it's April, the 49th. Best laid plans, sometimes they just don't work out. <laughs> it has been a day, y'all. It has been a day. All right, you guys, I am back at Walmart for a couple of reasons. It's sort of funny because I wouldn't say that I'm a consistent Walmart shopper, but I think that it's the best bet for me right now, trying to get everything on my list. We are in our fourth week. We're finishing up our fourth week of the huge grocery haul that I showed you guys a few weeks ago, and we've done really, really well, I think. We have eaten just about everything that I've purchased. We've eaten all the fresh produce. We have eaten up leftovers when there have been leftovers. We've been careful not to open new packages of things whenever existing packages are open. We have had very, very, very little waste. We've been without fresh produce for about a week now. Don't worry we've still been eating fruits and vegetables we've just been eating canned and frozen fruits and vegetables which I try to buy without added sugar sauces seasonings oils stuff like that and I just you know make them at home last week I had to make a trip out to run to the doctor for some lab work that they wanted really quickly so I decided while I was out that I would check out a few other stores we were running low on some household items like toilet paper and paper towels which I did not stock up on during the kind of panic craze buying that happened <laughs> I didn't want to take up room in my cart this week with those bulky items so so I went to Sam's and I went to Target to kind of check out how they were stocked and I wasn't super impressed. I was able to find the things I was looking for and I went ahead and made some purchases. So I will put that video up here in the corner if you're interested in seeing it and seeing my thoughts on that. But it confirmed for me that right now I feel like Walmart is the best bet for me to try to get all of the things that I am looking for or something close to it. I also need some things that are not necessarily food. Like my daughter needs a couple pairs of shorts to play in. We need bug spray. I need index cards for the kids' school, and I thought, you know, those might be things I can run over to the other side of the store and grab really quickly. Our state is actually beginning to open back up. They have a plan to try to open back up. I'm not sure how I feel about that, but I do feel like perhaps it is prudent of me to continue to limit my trips, and so that is why I'm going to try to do another multi-week grocery haul today. I have my mask that I'm taking in with me. I have sanitizer to use when I get back in the car. I even managed to wrangle up a package of antibacterial wipes. I got a lot of questions on the last video about whether or not I am sanitizing my groceries. And I gotta be honest with you guys, I'm not because I have done a lot of reading about that. And I checked the CDC website and I checked with um, friends of ours in the medical community. And I read a lot from sources that I trust. And according to everything I read, I made the decision not to worry about sanitizing my groceries. I feel like the biggest risk is actually going into the store. So the best thing I can possibly do is try to limit my trips and my exposure in the store store, not just for my own sake, but for other people's as well. Walmart's making an announcement in the parking lot like every five minutes. It's the first time I've ever heard of that happening, just about procedures for going into the store. I'm not used to being greeted by an intercom in the parking lot. It's kind of odd. Today, what I did is I actually placed an online order for some things. They opened up some more grocery pickup times and I noticed on the grocery app that things were kind of back in stock. So what I did was in my order, I put things that were kind of bigger and bulkier, like boxes of cereal, canned goods, cases of soda and stuff like that. And now I'm going to go inside the store and get my fresh produce and my meat and my dairy because I want to check expiration dates on that and the few things that are not food that I need to pick up. And by the time I'm done with that, my grocery pickup should be ready and I can just drive around to the side of the building and have them load that into my car. So hopefully that will take away the need to make a separate trip. All right, you guys, I'm gonna head in and I will let you know how it goes and I'll show you everything that I got. Well, that did not go as planned. I thought I had a great plan. I worked over the weekend to put my grocery order in and I guess I pressed send, but when I opened the grocery app today, my grocery order was still sitting in my cart. So I don't know what happened, but it said that my time slot had expired. So I went ahead and submitted it. I will have to go back later tonight to pick it up. There was no way I was going to be able to get everything else that was in that online order in my in-person store shop. My cart was overflowing by the time I had gotten my produce. I have so much fresh produce. I really underestimated what it would take 
to shop for three or four weeks at a time for my family. So it is what it is. I know these are, you know, times when we all have to be flexible, even when you're watching somebody's grocery haul. So I'm just gonna have to take you home and show you what's in this haul. Later on tonight, I will come up and pick up that online grocery order and I'll show you what's in that order and we'll just go from there. So, oh well, best laid plans. Sometimes they just don't work out. <laughs> These are the non-food items from my haul. My oldest daughter was really in need of some shorts for summer just to play in. A lot of the ones from last year she can wear now, but she's gonna outgrow them really quickly. So I found these in the kids department and these were only like 450, these like little athletic shorts. And then I got her these denim ones that have like some stretch in them and they're longer. They're like Bermuda length. She prefers those, I don't blame her. These were only like $9, I think $8.98. They were in the kids section as well. And then I got her this little shirt from the kids section. She's supposed to go to California later this year to see her cousin. And then these two shirts are just plain. They're from the junior section. She also requested a new hat. My kids wear ball caps a lot in the summertime just to kind of shield their face from the sun. And yes, we put sunscreen on them. So I just got her a plain one. And then I got this one for myself. I thought it was so, so cute. I think this one was only like $4.97 and this one I think was $7.97, really cute. She also requested some um, shampoo and conditioner for her shower because she's out. And she also wanted bug repellent. Now she and my son, my biological children basically are like super attractive to bugs. They find them and the mosquito bites are big and they itch bad and they scratch them and they get infected. So we have to have like the serious stuff for them because everything else doesn't work. I like these. She specifically requested these. I got the, these for her last year. These are wipes. And then this is like a lotion. So you have to actually rub these on your skin. And I just feel like you get better coverage with these. So I went ahead and picked them up because she's already starting to get some bug bites. I have wished a few times we just had a little mini stapler for the kids' schoolwork that I'm printing out. And they needed a few more index cards. We were out of foil. I needed just a salt grinder for my Himalayan pink salt. I bought a refill, but the bottles from Walmart do not um, refill, I found out or at least we can't figure it out. They actually had some antibacterial wipes. I've wanted to look for these little single, these are individually packaged. So you take them out and they look like this and it's just one per little pouch. And so these are great to like stick in a pocket or a purse. Slow cooker liners, I've been looking for these. I finally found some, some foil we were out and I really needed kitchen towels. I love these bar mops that they have there. They're really cheap, plus they're white and I can bleach them. But that's all non-food stuff and this stuff usually comes out of a different line item in our budget than our grocery budget. Okay, you guys, it's kind of crowded here on the island. I have some more back there. I'll try to move stuff around as I show you. I am most excited about all of this fresh produce, yay. I did not buy a lot of organic things because I gotta be honest with you, I'm not super impressed with the organic produce at Walmart. I don't know why, especially the organic fruit. I feel like it doesn't taste as good. Maybe it's not getting purchased as much, so the stock isn't rotating and it's old, but for whatever reason, I've not had good luck with organic produce at Walmart, so I just bought conventional for the most part, save for my greens. Some baby spinach and some romaine hearts. If you wanna make your um, clamshells last longer of your greens, put a paper towel on top of them after you open it on the inside, close it up and then flip it upside down and store it that way in the refrigerator. I find that my greens last a lot longer that way. A pineapple, some sweet peppers, some coleslaw mix. For some reason, I have been really craving egg rolls. <laughs> And when I got to looking into how to make them, I was like, man, that's a lot of work. So I decided I might just do some egg roll in a bowl and then top it with some wonton strips. So that's why I got these for the crunch factor. Basically, this was born of my laziness, y'all. Um, I got some asparagus. It's coming into season, so it's been really good. Mandarin oranges and three different kinds of apples, pink lady, gala, and green apples. These are fruits that last a long time in the refrigerator, so we usually won't dive into these until the second or third week when I'm trying to make it last. A bag of yellow onions, and there's also some garlic somewhere in here. I use these in almost every dinner recipe. Some carrots, some yellow squash, and some zucchini. I love to slice these up and roast them in the oven as a side vegetable for dinners. So yummy mini cucumbers. My kids love these and so do I. These will only last probably a few days in my fridge. Same goes for the grapes. They always go fast. Baby carrots, 
bananas, I think I missed you most of all. Yummy. I bought some that are almost ready to eat and some that will be ready to eat in a few days. They didn't have my pasture-raised eggs that I like, and I had put those in my grocery order. So I went ahead and took those out of my grocery order and just picked up conventional eggs. They seem to have plenty. Um, some whipped cream cheese. The kids like this for sandwiches. Some regular cream. Well, this is a third less fat cream cheese for recipes. Unsweetened almond milk. For some reason, the unsweetened vanilla almond milk has carrageenan, but the regular unsweetened great value milk does not. Some of the name brands don't have carrageenan, but they were pretty much out of those, I felt like. And y'all, butter was slim pickings. I really had to piecemeal some butter game here. So I've got some Kerrygold, I've got some conventional butter, and then there's a tub of butter. Yeah, right here, spreadable butter. My kids like this for toast. Four different kinds of cheese. These are two-pound blocks. Some of them will go in the freezer. I was really excited to see this. I had not seen sharp white cheddar in this size. And I like to use sharp cheeses in my cooking because they're much more flavorful and you can use less. So it goes farther and it saves you calories or points if you're on WW, which I am. This is 4% cottage cheese. It's the name brand because that's the only one I could find that didn't have carrageenan in it. I try to avoid that if I can. Unfortunately, it is in the lunch meat, but we'll deal with it. I got turkey breast and I also got chicken breast because I thought this might be good sliced up on some salads and I plan to have one today. They did not have whole milk Greek yogurt this time around, so I just got non-fat. I'll deal with it. And these are for the kids. They didn't have the Walmart brand Gogurt, so I just got these and I'll show you what I'm doing with those later with their snack buckets. Some feta cheese. I prefer to crumble my own. I think it tastes better. Some real Parmesan cheese. These are key lime yogurts and I got these for a recipe for key lime pie that I might try sometime. Um, cheese sticks for the kiddos, turkey pepperonis, hot dogs for the kiddos, and then a bunch of frozen veggies, four bags of broccoli, one bag of the fine green beans. I love to blanch these and then toss them with just like a teeny bit of butter and some breadcrumbs, salt and pepper. It's so good. Some regular cut green beans, some corn. I did not get a ton of meat because I have a butcher box coming in a week or so. And I'll leave a link up here to my butcher box video, but be warned you guys, butcher box is only putting people on a waiting list now. They're not taking new customers. I think they just got overwhelmed with the number of people signing up for it. I happened to sign up for it before the pandemic hit, but you don't see a lot of meat because I'm gonna get some delivered. Um, boneless, skinless chicken breast, just a three pound bag, some more turkey sausage, Another is turkey smoked sausage, one pound of organic grass-fed ground beef. This is 85.15. And then this is ground turkey. I have really been craving some hamburgers, and so I thought I would make burgers, and I might mix some of this to make the burgers, and also meatballs is something I've been wanting. Um, I have some hash brown potatoes here. These are the southern style that have peppers and onions in them, so these are really good. And these are just regular shredded hash browns. The only ingredients in these are potatoes, and in this case, the potatoes and the veggies. There's no oils. So if you're working WW, these are zero points on purple. And then I got a bag of frozen mango chunks. I love to snack on these. Just a handful of these or so. It's like eating a popsicle, but it's fresh fruit. Over here is some canned goods and pantry staples. I was out of quite a few seasonings and I have some more coming in my order tonight. Onion powder, oregano, chili powder, soy sauce. This is the lower sodium. We use that for cooking. I can't believe I let myself run out of salt, just like regular salt. <laughs> so I got some. Um, this is a drink flavoring. There's another one back here and some raisins. My son loves these. Some cereal bars. They're not the best for the kids, but they're good in a pinch, like for a quick breakfast. These are kind of like an off-brand Lilies, the um, sugar-free, you know, sweetened with stevia chocolate chip. They have these at my Walmart and I love to put these in my oatmeal and some other things. So I picked up the package. This is powdered buttermilk. I use this to make like homemade ranch mix and some other things. So I picked up some of this. They had plenty of it. I don't have an immediate need for cake mixes, but for some reason, I feel like one should always have a cake mix in one's pantry. I don't know why, but I just always feel like I should have one on hand just in case of a cake emergency. Some mini marshmallows, some jello for recipes. Again, the drink enhancers. This is that no propellant spray stuff that I like. Canned tomatoes, we use a bunch of these. I use a bunch of them in my recipes. I make a lot of sauces from scratch with these. So um, I have more coming in tonight's um, pickup order. Some green beans, some black beans, some pinto beans. Yes, we love beans. Some hamburger buns and some sweet um, Hawaiian rolls. 
two jars of queso, and this isn't the best. I know it's not the healthiest, but one or two tablespoons of this is one smart point. I think, yeah, usually one serving, which is two tablespoons, is one smart point, and a little bit goes a long way on like some eggs or um, something like that, you know, a rice bowl or something. Some salsa and some quick oats and some panko breadcrumbs. I don't have an immediate need for these, but yet, but again, another thing that I tend to keep on hand because sometimes a recipe calls for just a tablespoon or two of these. And like I said, I throw them in with my green beans. I keep these in my freezer because they'll stay fresh. And this is an example of something they were showing they were out of. This is just the great value brand quick oats. I eat oatmeal a lot. And they were showing they were out of this in the store app, but it was there when I went in, so I picked it up. So this grocery haul continues to be very interesting. I am supposed to be picking up my groceries now, but we are in a severe storm watch or tornado warning. There's a line of really strong storms moving into the Tulsa area. I just received a notification that my order is not ready, and I'm glad because I don't want to get out in this. Certainly makes for a less than less than stellar thunder less than professional well i'm usually less than professional on my youtube channel <laughs> but a less than streamlined video let's just say very interesting day for a grocery haul Um, it's almost eight o'clock, which is when grocery pickup closes. And we just had all these storms roll through and there's still one that might roll through and get us. And quite frankly, I'm not comfortable with the idea of associates loading my groceries in the car with lightning and rain coming through. So I called the customer care line and asked if I could move my order to tomorrow morning. There wasn't any way for me to do that from the app or from the computer myself. I had to have them do it for me and they're gonna hold the order for me until tomorrow morning. <laughs> so what's really funny about all this is that I had this grand plan. It's just been a mess. And it was gonna be this perfect like foolproof plan for how to only go into the store once and get three weeks worth of groceries and it's still going to end with me going into the store at least twice on two different days. It has been a day, y'all. It has been a day. It's been a day. Take two, you guys. Day two. This is like the grocery haul gone horribly wrong. 24 hours later and I'm finally picking up my online groceries from Walmart. So not their fault, just crazy circumstances. So crazy, I'm using my Christmas coffee cup. And it's April, the 49th. Anyway, nothing has gone seriously wrong. It's just been follies. It's just been <laughs> riddled with little hiccups along the way. So hopefully this is it and I'll be able to get this home and show you guys what I got. I wanna show you what I'm doing for the kids with snacks where that's concerned. And also just give you some ideas of what I plan to cook with this stuff. I forgot to mention too that yesterday, it started out with me getting all the way to the store and having to go back home immediately because I forgot my mask to go into the store. It's just been like doomed from the beginning. It was just doomed. Okay, so behind me, you see my Walmart grocery pickup. Most of this is like fun stuff. You know, this is where the processed stuff is. This is where the snacks and the treats and stuff like that are. The things that were in packages, that's primarily what I picked up with my grocery pickup. Most of this is like the snacky stuff. And so stay with me because I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do with this to kind of create some balance and some accountability where these snacks and treats are concerned. Okay, so starting over here, my kids have really been into the Cheerios thing lately. They've been eating a lot of Cheerios. And as sugar cereals go, as far as the sweetened ones are concerned, I feel like they are not as bad as others. And what I'm going to do to actually make them better is I'm going to mix them with just the plain Cheerios. And I have some of these cereal containers in my pantry already, but I bought a couple more yesterday. I forgot to show you guys. These also came from Walmart. So I'm gonna mix the plain and the regular together and um, that'll help kind of reduce the sugar in each serving too, but they're not that bad. I think they're 10 grams of sugar for a cup. Yeah, I mean, that's actually really good compared to some of the other ones. Some whole wheat pasta, some egg noodles, some spaghetti, some rotini. 
This was a mistake. I thought I was getting brown rice, but this is parboiled long grain rice. So um, I don't eat this on the WW Purple plan, but I'll just put it in the pantry and we'll figure out something to use it for another time. Some more of my favorite K-Cups. Um, I am going to get rid of my Keurig here pretty soon. It's kind of starting to not work as well. My husband has some K-Cups that he's working through. He drinks decaf or half-calf. And so I just needed to pick up a few more for myself. But when he's done with those K-Cups, I'm gonna go back to a regular coffee maker that just makes coffee from grounds. I need one that makes, you know, not very much coffee, like a single cup or even, you know, just a small pot. So if you have any suggestions, let me know because I kind of wanna get away from the waste of the K-Cups and the expense of it and just go back to regular ground coffee. Some more of the popping corn that I like. This is a popular snack for myself. My kids prefer tortillas to bread when it comes to sandwiches, so they'll make like a turkey and cream cheese roll-up or a peanut butter sandwich on a tortilla. Some more of the yogurt tubes. Cool Whip. Um, this is for a cake recipe that I think I'm gonna do in a few weeks as a special treat for Mother's Day, but um, I didn't wanna go to Whole Foods to get the really good quality Cool Whip, so I just got some of that. I know it's not great. I really like this cream cheese. It's a Greek cream cheese. And if you're on WW, it's only one smart point for a tablespoon and the ingredients are pretty good. This is all stuff that my husband requested. He likes a particular kind of oatmeal. He loves hummus, pretzels, crackers. So I got all that stuff for him. We needed a few more Ziploc bags. I don't use these a ton because I have reusable ones, but they come in handy occasionally, just the disposable ones. Some more slow cooker liners. Lots of tomato products, and so some crushed tomatoes, petite diced tomatoes, petite diced tomatoes, some that are seasoned, um, some pinto beans, one big thing of goldfish crackers. We were almost out of cornstarch. I just picked that up to have in the pantry. Some crushed pineapple, applesauce, a few strawberries. Those were an impulse buy for me. I just wanted them. And I requested a small jar of pepperoncinis. This is for a roast recipe that I make. And they gave me a giant jar. They subbed it. So I've got pepperoncinis for days. Some Parmesan cheese, some 90-10 ground beef. I've been craving hamburgers. And so I thought we might do burgers one night. And my husband likes this fat composition the best, especially on the grill because um, sometimes the ones that have a higher percentage of fat, they like make the grill fire up too much. <laughs> so they didn't have grass fed 90, 10, but oh well. And then I needed to replenish some of my spices. You saw some yesterday, but I was really running low on these. I think I forgot to mention tortilla chips, pretty much the only chip I always have on hand tortilla chips. Okay. Now over here, I have all the junk food and you know, before you get on to me about it, just hold on. Cause I'm going to tell you how I'm going to, you know, control the consumption of the junk food and balance it out. So this is Blue Bunny, Bunny Tracks ice cream. A neighbor of ours turned us on to this, and this will be a special treat now and again, like maybe once or twice a week, maybe would maybe just once a week, because I only have two containers of it. We are Bluebell and Brahms fans. That's pretty much our go-to ice cream when we get ice cream, but they brought this to a potluck, our neighbors did, and it was so good, I decided to pick up a little more. So those will go in the freezer. Some Cheez-Its, some Rice Krispie Treats, some peanut butter crackers, um, some, I don't know what these are, cookie sticks, two different kinds of candy bars, some Welch's fruit snacks, some Pringles, some Reese's Puff Treats, these are popsicles, and then some drinks, these are juices, and these are the 7.5 ounce cans of soda. I actually requested the Sam's Choice brand but they subbed these. So these are the name brand and these are the little cans. You know, these are a better size for um, a kid. So let me turn you guys around and I'll show you what I'm doing with this and how I'm balancing it out so that the kids don't overindulge on the junk food. Okay, so here is how I am attempting to fix the snacking issues in the house and just make it easier on everybody, but also give the kids some choices and some things that they're excited about. So I have a red bucket here that is full of treats. There's the little mini candy bars, the Rice Krispie treats, kind of the sweet things that you saw in the grocery haul. I have a blue bucket here with salty snacks with, you know, little peanut butter crackers, 
the little cheese it crackers, the Pringles. I also have a green bucket, which is full of like fruit cups and raisins. These are not sweetened. I buy just the regular fruit and water. And we also have fresh fruit in the refrigerator. I also have a stackable container in the refrigerator where I keep yogurts and string cheeses or little small packages of cheese. Yes, I know that it is more expensive to buy things in packages, but for me, it was worth the extra money for the convenience and for the accountability where portions are concerned. I have three little cups here that I put their names on. We get these little plastic cups at restaurants. Every day I'm going to let them pick one treat from the red bin, one snack from the blue bin, one fruit from the green bin or a fresh fruit, and one yogurt or string cheese. They'll take the snacks that they pick and they'll put them in their little cup and then they can have them whenever they want throughout the day. I cleared out a spot in my refrigerator so that all three of these little cups can fit in the door of the refrigerator and they will get to pick their snacks each day. So are they eating processed crap? Yes, a little bit, but I'm choosing my battles. So this allows them to make some choices. It allows them to have some treats, but I've also balanced it out with some healthier stuff. And I don't have to feel like I'm doling out snacks all day long. It is not constantly, can I have a snack? Can I have a snack? Can I have a snack? And they don't have to wait for a specific time. If they want to eat their snacks, they can eat them whenever they want, but they just know that that's the finite number that they get for the day. And besides that, we'll have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and that will be that. But if they wanted to sub a juice or a soda for their treat instead, I feel like that's a sugar for a sugar, and so I will permit that as well. So how much did I spend? We are a family of five, don't forget, mom and dad, and three growing children eating breakfast, lunch, snacks, and dinner at home almost every single day. I do get the school lunch for the kids um, about three days a week. That's probably gonna end in another couple of weeks as they're wrapping up the distance learning school year. So what you saw here was actually a little over $600. And I know that sounds like a lot, about $60 of that is tax because we have tax on food in Oklahoma and about 80 bucks of that, maybe a little bit more where there's non-food items like the clothes for my daughter and the kitchen items that I bought for storage and my salt grinder and stuff like that. That comes out of a different portion of my budget. And I was kind of lamenting that to my husband. I was like, gosh, I feel like I'm spending too much on groceries. My husband reminds me that first of all, he's actually eating more meals from home than normal. He usually has a lunch appointment almost every single day and sometimes a breakfast appointment that comes out of a different part of the budget. Secondly, we're eating out a lot less. We're not going to movies. You know, we're not going to do those recreational things that would normally cost us money. And also we're not putting money in the kids' lunch accounts at school right now. So all of that is kind of being taken into account whenever we're determining, you know, what's appropriate for us to be spending on food during this time. Long story short, we're eating at home more. And so we're going to be spending more on consumable products at home. And we have just moved some of that money from other parts of our budget into the grocery budget to give us a little bit of a cushion. Now I know that not everybody can afford to buy, you know, $500 worth of food up front. My husband and I have the cash flow to be able to do that. And so I feel like since I can do it, um, I should because there are other people who will need to continue shopping um, each week or every two weeks as their budget allows them. So by doing it this way, I feel like I'm helping myself and my family and I'm helping others by being one less person who's in the store frequently. Do you know what I'm saying? Okay, so what else do I plan to make this week? I'll try to leave some recipes linked in the description box. Some of the usual suspects will be on our meal plan, taco or burrito bowls, spaghetti, pasta several different ways, breakfast for dinner. The kids always enjoy having pancakes pancakes. I have been in a bit of a food rut, so I've picked out some new things and some things that I've been craving to try to work into our meal plan going forward. I'm gonna try something called Cincinnati chili. I think this is pretty popular in the Midwest. It's sort of like a, a thin sort of meat chili and you serve it over pasta, so I think that will be interesting. I also thought I would try a really simple chicken teriyaki recipe. I've been trying to come up with different ways to use chicken because I feel like I have like the same three or four recipes. I already told you guys that I've been craving hamburgers, so we'll probably do burgers one night. I also thought I would try meatballs and that I would mix the ground turkey with the turkey sausage and make some turkey meatballs for us. My kids love meatballs, so they will be really excited if I do that. I do have a butcher box coming and it's gonna have a pork roast and a chuck roast. Those always produce leftovers, so they make a couple nights worth of meals. I also had some friends tell me that I need to try this chicken stroganoff recipe. And I also have had a recipe pinned for a while that I want to try and I'll probably kind of tweak it just a little bit to be a little bit more WW friendly. It's called Drunken Italian Noodles. 
I can't make that up. Okay, you guys, I'm sorry this is so long. It was such a weird couple of days trying to get this together. And I really try to keep my videos around 15 to 20 minutes. I don't see how that's gonna be possible with this one. So if you have stuck with me to the end, thank you so, so much. But hopefully this is gonna get us through the next four weeks or so, um, feeding my family mostly meals from home. Thank you so much again for watching and for stopping by. And I'll check in with you guys again with another video very soon.